free resources that take you from 0 to 1 in coding. I'm going to start with a disclaimer. I am launching the second cohort of the 100x devs bootcamp very soon. That is a paid cohort. Before I do that, I want you to put out free resources that can take you from 0 to 1. Believe it or not, 90% of learning coding depends on you. Only 10% depends on a mentor, someone that gives you direction or a paid course. This is the 90%. If you feel this is enough, it is enough. This is what took me from 0 to 1. If you feel you need some push, some direction, feel free to join the cohort if you feel the syllabus is relevant and the price is manageable. With that, let's get right into it. This video will cover three things for a few technologies. What to learn, basically what all technologies I feel are good slash needed to take you from 0 to 1. Why to learn these technologies, what are the final outcomes, why I feel they are necessary to learn, how to learn them, this basically covers the resources that I used when I was in college and when I was in Goldman Sachs to upskill my learning. My 0 to 1 learning happened by myself. My 1 to 100 learning happens a lot of times on the job. Good jobs. My good jobs started 2020 onwards when I started working remotely. This covers everything from 2014 to 2020, how I learned and what I learned. We'll cover two basic things, DSA and Dev. Believe it or not, both are almost equally important in your 0 to 1 journey. It keeps changing what is more important depending on which market cycle we are in. Currently, we are in the bear, which basically means the dev is slightly more important. Companies are really making sure you can do your job on day zero. During the bull, companies hire a lot. DSA is a decent enough metric. DSA is good to know, probably more important during a bull. We will start with DSA. The why of DSA is basically divided into three parts. You can pick and choose which level you are aiming for. Level 3 is the lowest level. Level 1 is the highest level. There is a saying that says, if you aim for the stars, you will reach the moon or vice versa. Do you get the idea? If you aim for this, you'll probably reach here. That's ha what happened for me as well. So even though I'm showing you three levels, try to aim for a level above what you want to reach. Why do you need DSA? It helps you crack interviews at the very least. ACM, ICPC, regionals is what I want you to write here. Regionals is basically when you compete with a bunch of people in India on competitive programming. That's level two. Level one is ACM, ICPC, world finals. This is what I was aiming in college as well. I did reach regionals, I think we had a 17 rank or something like that, we never reached world finals. One of my teammate actually ended up going to world finals, eventually like after he changed his team. But this was what I aimed for, this is what I reached, I feel these are the good outcomes of data structures and algorithms. What to learn in DSA? I am going to keep it very 0 to 1, which basically means I might not cover a lot of things that are important for world finals or even regionals. I want to focus on the 0 to 1 journey, this is a very beginner friendly video. So we're going to cover topics that you definitely need to know before you're hitting an interview. Linear data structures that uh, covers arrays, stacks and linked lists, mostly for real world problems. They're going to focus on arrays. No one's going to focus on linked lists and stacks because both of these can actually be achieved via an array. But for interviews, a lot of times they'll ask you this. So good to know, well, probably zero to one to not good to know, definitely needed. Strings, ad hoc and math problems. Strings are basically uh, problems that are related to strings. One example might be reverse string, palindrome, things like these. Ad hoc and math problem uh, consists of problems that are logic related, which basically means you either have to solve them via math or you have to solve them via brute force or some ad hoc tech, not technology, ad hoc uh, technique that you can use in this specific problem. A lot of times this comes via practice and not via, you know, uh, if you, or if you have great intuition in maths that comes as well. but if not, then you'll have to do a lot of practice and understand ad hoc problems. Graphs and trees are slightly non-linear data structures. This sort of keeps on increasing if you want to go to world finals, things like segment trees, persistent segment trees, but for interviews, probably good enough. Um, standard problems out there, easy to mid, you should be able to solve until you reach DP. DP is slightly hard, requires some intuition and can't be built on day zero. Will take a few iterations for you to reach a point where you can understand DP problems and see them yourself, but super important especially for like Google, Fang, these sorts of interviews. Lastly, binary search is, again, you have to build intuition for it. Once you build intuition for it, it's very obvious that a specific problem can be solved via binary search. Cool. This is the what, this is the zero to one what. If you want to do more, you can. Probably good enough for most interviews based on what level of problem you're solving. Solve at least easy to medium, maybe even hard on lead code. How to learn these technologies? Basically, the resources I used to follow in college. There is code forces and there is lead code. These are the two biggest ones, code forces is how most people in IITs are learning uh, DSA. This, the reason is it's very competitive. You sort of can track how people are doing throughout. So like there's a leaderboard on you which you can track how your friends are doing. People are very competitive in IITs. So 
code versus also has like pre pretty decent problems and you can see your graph of growing very quickly you go from i can solve two problems to three problems to division two from division two to division one so on and so forth so at the very least do this i know you'll probably be advised to do other things like lead code or gfc or you know simpler problems you can but this creates great intuition gives you real world problems and when you're in a contest right it's much easier to compete and solve a problem than you know sit in your own time and solve a lead code problem lead code is pretty good for an interview it's probably the best resource out there very structured and a lot of times problems are repeated in an interview a lot of this is to get a job right the job is what the bare minimum of what people want which is basically cracking interviews and cramming interviews is not the worst idea in the world people have different opinions i feel it's fine as long as eventually you're going to, you know, since you're not going to eventually use data sets and algorithms, it's fine if it's a metric and you cram it. So lead code is the, probably the best resource to cram it. Focus on building intuition, super important. Um, it's easy to copy problems, probably don't do it beyond a point or even at all. Um, focus on building intuition, this is how you will grow. You will get good intuition if you're solving ICPC problems or aiming for ICPC versus if you're just using lead code and trying to prepare for your interviews. Um, so I'd urge, if you have the time, if you don't have interviews lined up next week, then please focus on building intuition, which will happen if you solve a lot of code process problems. Ask ChatGPT for hints. I did not have this during my time. You do now. ChatGPT, don't ask it for a solution. Solutions are anyways out there. Ask it for a hint. Ask it to point you in a certain direction and then try to build upon the problem. Still try to build the intuition yourself. Upskilling, uh, sorry, upsolving after the contest is basically means after a contest ends and you weren't able to solve certain problems, solve them again, re look at editorials if you feel like it, but generally try to spend some more time. If you can usually solve A and B, try to solve C yourself after the contest. If you could solve A, B and C, try to solve D after the contest. Upsolving is sort of the best way people who go to world finals increase their learning curve. You won't increase your learning curve if you're following someone or you know if you're looking too much at uh, solutions. So try to avoid solutions, especially if you have the time. If you have an interview lined up next week, next month, whatever, then feel free to do whatever you want. Feel free to cram up solutions as well. Let's get into dev. These are the three levels. Level one is dev helps you your, in your portfolios, get into a startup and GSOC. GSOC is probably the best one here if you're trying to aim for something. But if you want to just create portfolios, if you're just aiming for a simple startup, not too complex of a remote job, this is level three. This is what dev gets you. Level two is remote jobs that are in a range of 50 to 80 K US dollars, which is basically considered as a junior engineer in a remote job. A junior engineer in a remote job needs to have some basic set of DSA skills, sorry, not DSA, dev skills. This also depends on the niche you want the job in, but web development is sort of the popular niche in remote jobs. Um, that's level two. Level one is the 4CR offer, which basically means you're a senior engineer in a remote offer. And you know, yeah, it's a pretty lucrative position to be in. I don't need to repeat this. Dev has this in your zero to one journey. I am covering zero to one journey because one to 10, the, the journey beyond one is very self-motivated and you know, sometimes on the job and you need to have someone who tells you what's happening in the industry. Only then can you go from one to hundred. Preferably if you have your own job, that that's the easiest way to go from one to hundred where you've been given tasks that are very uh, advanced. But zero to one, I'm starting from the very basics here. HTML, CSS and basic JavaScript, hundreds of resources out there. We'll cover resources later, but I hope okay, this thing, the basics of it is out there on the internet and you know it. People learn this in 11th and 12th as well. Very basic to cover and like, don't spend too much time here. I keep repeating this, but yeah, HTML, CSS and JavaScript is a whole web and you can go very deep into it. Don't go too deep into it. HTML and CSS specifically, a few weeks are good enough. Node.js and communication protocols. This is basically starting to write backend code if I have to like put it in a more fancy uh, wording, backend coding or like backend development in full stack. Frontend using frameworks like React, Next, or Vue.js. So this will let you do basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or basic frontend. Basic frontend is great for KDE projects, not great in the industry or like at all. React has sort of become bare minimum of some some technology that you need to know if you want to be a frontend engineer. So if you're spending X time here, you need to spend at least five to ten X time here. So optimize accordingly, and uh, super important if you want to do dev, don't neglect this. This is how frontend is done in the real world. Basic DevOps, being able to deploy your application, there are hundreds of free resources today. Unless your application is hitting a million users per day or something, you'll be fine. You can deploy your applications for free. Look at those resources, put them out there and make sure people are seeing them. Put them on GitHub so people can review your code whenever you're interviewing or trying to apply for a job. Backend communication, this is slightly advanced. It's different from point two. This is basic backends. This is backends talking to each other. So it covers things like message queues, pub subs, uh, 
basically making your backend systems talk to other backend systems uh, not needed in 0 to 1 probably just one plus uh, that's when you need to understand backend communication and some cloud specific constructs basic devops is basically using something like Vercel, if you've heard of it to deploy which basically means you pretty much do nothing it takes care of everything but understanding how you would actually deploy this on something like aws or gcp is the last part i think this is good zero to one because you can own writing and deploying a website end to end and believe it or not this is not too difficult the difficult bits come after this when you get into some more complicated uh, libraries that let you sort of write all of these systems so that's more complicated this is slightly easy this is zero to one i'm not saying it can be done in a day it will take some time but this is the zero to one of development um, if you can do all of this which basically means you can build a website and deploy it you're pretty sorted in your zero to one how to learn this this is how i learned a lot of development i did not use free code camp or youtube i feel these are good resources today especially if you're at the zero bit you don't know anything at all then you need to look at someone and you know get motivated a bit so feel free to spend time here free code camp is the name itself has free has every tutorial out there for any technology that you want to learn so be aware of tutorial hell is the only thing i'd say which is don't follow the instructor too much try to code yourself building projects and posting them on github um, if you're looking at youtube at the very least copy what the instructor is doing even better if you try to create a variation of it if they are creating a twitter clone try to create a facebook clone so that you can apply the knowledge that you've learned and you make sure that you have actually learned the thing you can actually apply that on a project of your own and you're not stuck in tutorial hell just looking at tutorials isn't enough building projects is probably 10 times more important than doing this looking at a gsoc organization that's step three okay you will never know how code is being written in the real world if you just you know look at youtube tutorials or build projects of your own you'll build it yourself you'll write bad code if you look at some gsoc organizations it will give you some intuition as to okay this is how code is written these are the technologies that are being used for example you might feel javascript is the right technology but a lot of organizations use typescript which is some jazz on top of javascript so make sure at every point if you feel like you know a lot open a gsoc organization look at their code base and make sure you're able to understand things the things that you're not able to understand are the things that you need to learn next these were the organizations for me gambit mozilla processing and rocket.chat i contributed in all of them i opened issues in all of them i did gsoc in both of them so this is how i was able to understand so this is how things are happening in the real world i would do something myself build a kiddie project do a gsoc and understand okay this is how you do it and then build a better project and then do more gsoc so on and so forth the cycle sort of continues a lot of learning happens on a job which is why open source is cool because you can understand how real world issues are being solved that makes you a better developer lastly github trending and reading company code bases so these are code bases, bases believe it or not so these organizations are they're less focused on writing really good code or the fanciest technology a lot of these are not for profit so they don't they, they can be a little slow in catching up to technologies companies are not companies are building real businesses profits so on and so forth i'm not saying gsoc organizations are, aren't building real businesses but at the same time they're not focused on profits they might not have a bunch of co contributors a lot of times contributors are volunteers here people are getting paid for their job so they have to you know maintain very strict code bases so after you feel like you understand enough gsoc organizations look at real companies and also look at the github's trending section that's github.com slash trending look at what projects are trending right now and try to follow them this is a super important resource at least for me back in college where i would look at okay what are people building back then the fancy thing was websites and backends libraries like express were very new back then react was very new back then and those were the things that were trending what does trend today today mostly machine learning ai some graphics projects are what are trending these are the things that you need to be good at so that eventually when the world grows you can you know, contribute to them so keep your eye on github trending and please after you look at a video this is step 0.0, .0. this is 0 0.1 building your own thing this is 0 0.5 actually understanding other people's code and then this is one where you can actually read real world code this is you don't have to know everything but you need to checkpoint your knowledge at all times that is it and those were the two technologies i wanted to cover dsa and dev and all the resources that i use to go from zero to one if you want to buy my cohort that will be coming very soon the syllabus and price will be revealed in the launch video you can subscribe to telegram and discord we'll be announcing it there first with that let's get right into it i'll see you guys in the next one not get right into it with that let's end it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye